Hi, I'm Robert. I'm a threat analyst at Reversing Labs, and today I'll show you how to analyze a remote administration tool on the A1000 appliance. Once we open the appliance, we can see the submissions page. On the submissions page, we can do a sample search by any of the hashes. We can submit a file, and we can submit a URL to download the file from. In one of our incidents, we ran into a specific hash, and we will look for that hash here. When we click on the magnifying glass, we actually issue the search, and we can see that for this hash, the last time we have seen it was 10 days ago. It is available for download in the cloud, and the threat name is Finlowski. Finlowski is one of the aliases for Dark Comet, and we can see that the file size is what you would expect of a Dark Comet sample to be. We click on the accordion and click on the fetch and analyze sample. This fetches the sample from the cloud onto the A1000 appliance and analyzes it. When we reach the submissions page again, we can see that the last sample uploaded is identified as Dark Comet. The naming standard in this case is SHA-1, when in fact we look for SHA-256, however, this is the same sample. We can also see that the titanium core identified this sample as Dark Comet somewhere around version 5. If we are interested only in the classification properties of a sample, we can see all relevant information on the summary page and in the pane on the left-hand side. For example, we can see that the overall threat name is Windows 32 backdoor named Dark Comet, and two components on the A1000 platform confirm this. These are the Titanium Core component and the Titanium Cloud component. Once we open the sample, if we are interested only in the classification verdict for this file, we can rely mostly on the left pane. So in this case, the Titanium Core component, the Titanium Cloud component, and the RHA hash bucketing mostly confirm the verdict of this file as being malicious. We can also see that Titanium Cloud, there are 44 of 45 antivirus detections, mostly confirming that this sample is in fact malicious. From the Titanium Core side, we can see that this sample is classified by form and structure. On the summary page, there is a brief description of the file that tries to explain in a short paragraph of text what the file can do and what the most important information really is. So this file tries to masquerade as a remote service application for Microsoft Corporation, and the C2 server is port Microsoft.Systes.net on a very odd port. If we go to the Titanium Cloud pane, we can see all of the antivirus vendors that identify this file as being malicious with all of their verdicts. So we can see that, for example, here is Dark Comet, this is Finlowski, there's Dark Comet again, Finlowski again, and so on and so on. Like I said, these are aliases of Dark Comet. From a classification standpoint, this is all that's needed to classify this incident as being truly malicious. However, if we wish to analyze this file more in depth, we can go to the Titanium Core pane. In the Titanium Core pane, we can see all of the statically available metadata extracted by the Titanium Core platform. For example, in version info, we can see the information that was extracted in Storyteller that describes this application as a remote service application for Microsoft Corporation. On the indicators view, you can see simple descriptions of what this file might be able to do. All of this information is inferred statically and describes all of the possibilities of this file. For example, you would expect that the remote administration tool would try to evade certain debuggers, sandboxes, or analysis tools. So in fact, this sample tries to evade firewalls, antivirus solutions, tries to detect virtualized environments, and so on. Also, you'd expect that the remote administration tool takes screenshots, records audio streams, tries to detect other running processes, tries to persist itself somewhere in the registry, either through services or all around registry keys, you would also expect that there's some kind of networking, like listening on incoming networking connections, connecting to outbound C2 servers, and so on and so on. So all of this paints a clearer picture of this, of what this file can actually do. If you're interested only in the bot configuration of this remote administration tool, you can go to the package view. On the package view, you can see the most important information related to this bot configuration. For example, you can see the bot's mutex, which ensures that only a single sample runs on the target's machine. And you can also see the C2 information, which can further be used to pivot using our advanced search capabilities to find other similar samples. So for example, we'll take this specific C2 information and query 
our advanced search to see if there are other similar samples with this C2 domain. We do this by using the URI keyword. After a while, we will see if there are any other C2 like this one present in the cloud. So we can see that the only sample similar to this one is also a dark comet sample with a different hash. However, it's common for actors to use other subdomains on dynamic DNS services. So we can change this part using a wildcard. After a while, we can find even more candidates that might be worthy of further inspection. We can see even other families potentially reusing the same domain. This sums up our demonstration. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.